Kenny, can you um, kind of – Brandon, the, the stats haven't been, like, super off the chart, but – it's a big difference when he's in there and, and, and as he's gotten back and healthier, it, it really does make a big difference. Can you kind of go over what you see when he's out there? Well, I go back to what I saw when he wasn't out there. Another player that um, productive, even when he's not playing great, he does some things well, uh, can play two positions, the four and the five. When you put him at the five, he's quick enough that at times he can beat him off the dribble facing the floor. Uh, understands the concepts on defense at times, um, which is an added plus. He's just another good player. Uh, and then when we come back, you see even when he's not in rhythm, he's still helping us. And whether the numbers show it or not, it really doesn't indicate how important he is to this team. Um, going back to the game um, at Duke, it seemed like that they were getting like a lot of easy baskets. You would, they just had, you know, they hit some cuts, and there were guys that were just like left open. Um, after you watch the film, um, you know, how do you fix those issues? It's the same thing we've been doing every day. Um, you know, it's not like some recurring thing that has happened. Is we work on defense every day. Over half the practice is dedicated to understanding where you got to be position wise the importance of keeping the ball in front, the importance of being, uh, we call it tight shell, where we're protecting the paint. But then in a game, we emotionally are not focused on the things we need to focus on. And so an offensive player can see gaps in our, in our defense and they attack gaps. We have to do a better job of that. Like again, I go back to this. I said it from day one. We're going to keep working on getting better every single day. So it may be February, March, whatever it is, <laughs> we're going to keep working on getting better. Kenny, you guys were able to beat Georgia Tech here the, the first time around. What from that game that, that you like that you can take going into round two? I love the energy that we played with uh, leading up to down the, the stretch of the game. Didn't like the way we finished because – you know, they offensive rebound the ball against us very well, which allowed them to get back in the game. Um, I thought we made big shots at critical times. Um, we have to do those type of things. But they, they're they shooting the ball more better than, better than when we played them the first time. Um, and they're doing it with multiple guys. So this is not going to be an easy game. We got to come with energy. We got to defend. We can't let the game get into an offensive game. We have to get stops. You kind of touched on my question there. I mean, they went through a streak. I think it was like nine losses, but they've won three of their last five and close in the other games. What is kind of, when you're looking at them, kind of clicked for Georgia Tech lately? I just think shooting the ball. You know, when you look back at the press conference, the post-conference uh, quotes that, that Josh talked about, look, we had open looks we missed. We missed a lot of shots. Uh, he's correct. Uh, they did miss a lot of shots, but, you know, looking now, they're shooting the ball more instinctively. Um, they have players that are, like, really – and they went small a lot. Uh, so those are two things that – they're shooting it more instinctively. They went to a smaller lineup, and they're playing off of each other. Really good in transition. Three or four guys have the ability to bring the ball up the court which is a different dynamic that we have to be ready for in defensive transition. Kenny, it feels like throughout the course of the year, you guys are playing, I don't know if the right term is, more purpose on offense. The ball's not sticking as much, and you guys are getting much better looks, more aggressive. Do you see that as, as well? No question. I think um, it's been about a month now that um, we've been working on just passing the ball every day, uh, having sessions in our practice and our morning mm -hmm. sessions where the ball is moving and you got a fraction of a second to hold it and you got to pass it to somebody, which forces them, the guy who doesn't have the ball to move beforehand to get open. Uh, eight or nine passes, don't dribble it, get me into a basket, then attack the lane from that. So that has helped us understand passing, cutting, moving, um, and it's translated into us playing better offense we still got a ways to go because we're not instinctively a good passing team, but we've, getting, we've gotten a lot better. 
Um, when you have a game, you know, you, you said on Monday that you guys are beat, you beat a physically. Um, how has a team, um, you know, uh, taken that this week uh, during practice? How have you seen them uh, react to that? Ask the question again. Yeah. So you mentioned that Duke, Duke was, you know, Duke was a more a uh, physical team. Um, you know, uh, coming off that game, have you seen your players, you know, uh, try to show some more uh, physicality in practice heading into this next one? So what we did was <coughs> we showed the Duke game offensive rebounding. Look what we did. Look how we look. Look how we they're attacking us on the boards. We're not going to find bodies first. Then we came back and said in that same clip. Look at what Georgia Tech did at the end of the game. One guy has seven offensive rebounds, another guy had four. Guys, we have to address this. This is just as important as the turnovers. You have to you play great defense for 20-something seconds, and all of a sudden they shoot. We got an opportunity to get the ball. We don't come up with the ball. They get a three. <laughs> you just look at it and you say, we have to address this. So the last couple of days, really been focused on rebounding the ball, being in the right positions to hit people, and then attacking the ball above the rim. We've talked a lot about L Ellis and what he's done all year long, but obviously he's been on another level tear uh, in recent days. What's that say about him, especially late in the season, the guy who plays you know, almost every minute of every game to be able to continue to do this at this level? I respect Farrell. I love what he's doing. Um, he's given his heart to it. He's poured a lot into this to have the type of year he's having. I'm demanding. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going in the game saying, L, I know you can score. I need you to get eight, nine, ten assists. I need you to get that. He's trying to get it. There are games where if we knock a shot down here and there, probably would have nine or ten assists. Um, there's still an area I need him to grow. I need him to lock down defensively. I need him to be connected defensively, and I'm challenging him to go out and not only, I know you're playing a lot of minutes, but guard people the way they're guarding you. Don't let them deny you the ball, and you just don't do it to them, trying to rest and, and save up energy to play offense. If we're going to win, we're going to win at the defensive end of the court. And that's hard. That's hard because he's playing a lot of minutes. He has a lot of responsibility. He has to beat the press. He has to get us in the offense, he has to make sure other players are getting shots, and I'm asking him to lock down his, his man. <laughs> so I'm asking a lot. Kenny, before the last three games, J.J. was, I think, maybe one for 19 or 20 from three, and he's seven of ten. I, is there anything different? I mean, he's always had kind of a, a, a different-looking shot, or, or, you know, is there anything that's been different in the last couple games? I just think J.J.'s playing with great energy. More importantly, I think he's playing with great confidence. Uh, I think he's reacting instead of thinking. Um, I like the threes, but I'm more impressed when he offensive rebounds and dunks the ball. I'm more impressed when he catches the ball, crab dribbles, jump hook. Uh, I need that. I need tough stuff. I don't just need to catch and shoot somebody penetrating kick. That's fine. That's good. Has to take those shots. I need him to do the tough stuff that helps you win a game. After he, um, you know, uh, went down in that Duke game, uh, was there any thought, you know, just to, you know, just to just uh, keep him on the bench and, you know, not not at risk at uh, getting injured anymore? And just, you know, um, how has he been doing, you know, in these last several days of practice coming off? Last that? several days of practice, he's been really good. He's he's came in and done everything that's been asked during that game. Um, I asked him how he felt. He looked at me sort of funny. All right, just sit down. We'll we'll figure it out. Um, so I'm happy that he's back into it. He seems to be 100%. I'm expecting him to go out and have a big game. You've talked for a year now about the culture, the history of this program. Games at Georgia Tech, games in Atlanta have always drawn a large group of people. Some churches you know, do the bus thing, and assuming they're doing the same thing. How important are things like that? And, and I know you love, you love to see the support, but, uh, but when you get it on the road, it's a little different. I hear that there's a large number of groups, uh, buses going, uh, over 10. Um, we're going to meet them at a hotel. We're going to greet them, thank them for coming and supporting us. And that's important. That's important, um, guys, for the black community who's going to get in a bus and travel to Atlanta and watch us play a game. 
that we respect them and let them know we appreciate the love that they show. Um, I want us to do more for them, uh, but words can't express the gratitude that I personally feel knowing they're coming and supporting us that way. I mean, where do you go where you get over 10 buses of people coming to support? That's, that's rare. Three games left in the regular season, obviously from a one-loss standpoint, not where everybody, including yourself, I'm sure, thought it would be. Uh, with the, the end of the regular season, the postseason, ACC postseason uh, staring you down, one of the things that this team's gotten compliments for is how they don't seem to give up. Um, what's your message to them about, uh, you know, here we, we, we've got a few last games left uh, together as a group. What, what do you tell them as they wind things up this year? I will fight you. I'll fight you if I have to. I'm not letting you give up. I'm not letting you let go of the rope. Uh, I will have an issue with you because we owe it to each other. Every player from 1 through 14, you bring it every single day. Our whole thing from day one is win the day. Win the day. Today is about today. Tomorrow will be about Georgia Tech. So today we are not worried about Georgia Tech. We're worried about us. We have to make sure that we fight every single day. And I'm not, I'm not accepting, look, <laughs> it's been a hard year for everybody. For, for these young men to come in here and never be coached like this, to never be pushed like this, to never practice like this, it's different. Um, and for them to see and feel themselves get better, to understand what it means to be a part of a team, to be connected. We have gotten a lot better, but it goes to show how far behind we were. That makes sense. Um, when you see Elk get to spend, you know, uh, some time with his parents um, at Durham, um, just I wanted to get your thoughts on just, you know, how they've shaped him um, into the person that you see every day on the court. Well, I know, first of all, his mom is always super supportive. And at, she was at Florida State. She was somewhere else, uh, NC State. Um, it's good to see that. Um, and what happens in this profession is that we always want to talk about the name on the front of the jersey. But then there's another name on the back of the jersey. He's representing his family. And I'm begging, pleading, hoping, uh, encouraging him to represent his family with grace and dignity and uh, humility and go out and fight. So he's done a good job of that. And so has most of the other guys as well, or all of the other guys as well. All right, gentlemen.